In this video, I'm gonna take you from beginner to expert when it comes to merchant fulfilling orders on Amazon, also known as Amazon FBM. We're gonna talk about how to use FBM to grow our business in record time, how to set up your shipping templates correctly, how to fulfill orders properly, and what materials and equipment you're gonna to need to streamline the process. Now, I do recommend you stay until the end of the video because FBM does have different moving parts than FBA. And if you've never done this before, chances are you're gonna set things up incorrectly. So when you do get an order, your shipping cost is gonna be through the roof killing all of your profit or you're not going to be prepared to handle the orders that are coming in so you're going to get a bunch of negative feedback or you're not going to get any orders at all i want you to be as prepared as possible to capitalize on the opportunity of fbm and be able to make the most amount of money possible just like my client taryn right here who went from zero to 25k a month in less than 90 days my client davis who went from zero to 20K a month within seven weeks, all doing FBM to add rocket fuel to their businesses. And I'm gonna show you how to do the exact same thing in this video. So let's get into it. Now, most people are familiar with FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon. That's where we send our goods to the Amazon warehouses. And then Amazon is willing to store our inventory, fulfill the orders, handle customer service and handle returns. But with FBM fulfilled by merchant, we are doing all of that heavy lifting ourselves. We're storing the inventory, we're fulfilling orders, we're handling customer service, and we're handling returns. So naturally, a lot of people, when they see or hear about FBM, they think, well, that's a lot more work, it's a lot more complicated, I want something a little bit more hands-off, and I agree. Yes, if you do FBM, it's definitely the way to go for scale, and it's definitely the way to go for the majority of the year. But you are not tied to one or the other. You can do FBA and FBM simultaneously. You can even be on the same listing, double dipping with FBM orders and FBA. But the reason FBM is so powerful is because it is your cash flow solution. You're gonna be able to turn your money over significantly faster doing FBM than if you were doing FBA. Because look, this is the typical path of an FBA shipment. You purchase the inventory, you send it off to Amazon, you wait for the shipment to arrive, Amazon checks it in, they process the shipment, they make it available for sale, and then customer orders, and then you get paid. But the typical path for FBM is that you purchase the inventory, the customer orders it, and then you get paid right after that. So because of this, you can grow your business significantly faster doing FBM because you're just able to turn over your money. Potentially, if you buy the right product that is selling fast enough, you could buy the product, list it in store. By the time you get home, that product could have already sold or you sell out within the same day or the, or the next day or within that same week. So then you're just waiting for Amazon to pay you out for you to flip that money over again. So if you have the time and the energy to do FBM and you wanna grow really fast, that is the way to go. Now you can do FBM year round. You can do literally FBM exclusively if you wanted to, but I think the best way is to do them simultaneously, have your FBA shipments going in and then have your FBM shipments for certain kinds of products. For me personally, I mainly focus on doing FBM during quarter four. There are some opportunities here and there that I will take advantage of uh, throughout the year, but mainly I'm focusing on FBA. But once we go to the Q4 season, which at the time of recording, we're about to go into Q4. That is when I go really heavy into FBM to really capitalize on the growth. During quarter four, demand significantly increases for so many different products, right? I would say the majority of the products, assuming they're giftable products, the demand increases significantly. Well, when that demand increases, a lot of people who are strictly doing FBA are gonna start selling out. And because of the time of the year and because of the demand and because of how busy all of these Amazon warehouses are, the people who are willing to do FBM are gonna capitalize on an increased demand, but also on an increase in price because now we don't have as much supply to meet that demand. So the prices of a lot of products are gonna go up. So the people who are doing FBM are gonna be able to capitalize on all of those higher prices because they're the only people in stock. If you send in an FBA shipment too late in the year, it's probably not the best idea because the warehouses are just too backed up. It's gonna take way too long for it to process. And then if you really wanted to sell it during peak Q4 season, you might not be able to do that because we have no control of when that shipment is going to be processed. Some people get lucky and their shipment gets processed pretty quickly and they're able to sell. And some people, their shipment doesn't get processed until you know January is when they really become available for sale. But if you're doing FBM, you are in complete control of that. So you can list your products, 
if you sell out, you can go back to the store, you can buy some more, you can list them again. So you're able to capitalize on that increased demand and the higher price points to make a lot more money. And like I said, at the time of recording this, we're about to go into the Q4 season. So I think everyone should start testing the waters with FBM so that you know how to handle five to 10 orders that come in before you start getting 50 to 100 orders and you have no idea what you're doing because you've never done it before. Okay, so now that I've hopefully convinced you a little bit to consider doing some FBM, let's jump into my computer. I'm gonna show you how to set everything up properly. It's really not as complicated as a lot of people think. I'm gonna make it as simple as I possibly can. All right, guys, so I'm in my shipping settings within Seller Central. To get to this page, all you have to do is go up here to the gear icon in your top right corner, hover over that gear icon, go down to shipping settings, and then it will take you to this page. Now from here, we have a couple of things that we need to do before we can actually assign a shipping template to specific products that we're fulfilling FBM. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to go over to locations. So these are going to be the locations that your FBM orders are being shipped from. So all you need to do to add a new location is you go to create a new location. And then it's going to give you this pretty straightforward sheet right here that you need to fill out with your location name, your address and all of those details. And then you go to create location and then it will pop up in your locations tab. All right, guys, so we're going to go back to the shipping settings and we're going to go to general shipping settings right here. And here you're going to have all your information from default shipping address to handling time, holidays that you're not going to be fulfilling orders on. And if you ever need to edit these things, you can just click on the tabs right here. So this is going to be an important one for you guys. Now, you can do zero day handling time. I like to do one day handling time. Guys, I'm a father, I have kids, I have a lot of responsibilities. I can't commit to fulfilling orders the day they come in. And my FBM orders still get ordered just as frequently as everybody else. I have no issues making sales. So don't feel like you have to do zero day handling time to get the buy box. The most important thing when it comes to the buy box doing FBM is not your handling time, it is your pricing. If your pricing is competitive for an FBM offer, not for an FBA offer, then you will still get sales. I mainly sell on listings that have very little to no FBM sellers, all dominated by FBA, but if I come in and I have a good price, I can still win that buy box. So number one thing is your pricing, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. But if you want to come in and you want to do zero day handling time, you can do that. All you have to do is go over here to edit and you'll be able to change that. You can also change your order handling capacity, which I have none. Uh, you can also change your automated handling time. Now active. Now I have no capacity set for order handling, which means how many orders can you fulfill comfortably? I have no issues with this. During Q4, we do get super busy, uh, but I just make sure I move things around in my personal life, so make sure that I can handle that. But if you are selling something with like some serious volume that you're getting into the hundreds and hundreds of orders per day and you don't feel comfortable fulfilling those, then you can always set a, a handling capacity. I just never do. But that's pretty much it. Then you also have your buyer requested cancellation and your holidays, and then we go over to the shipping template, which is probably the most confusing for most people. I'm gonna show you guys my shipping template and you can see that I have a couple here. Every time you make one, you're gonna have them on this left dashboard right here. I don't have a bunch, I mainly use three. I use the free 30 day express shipping and I use the charge per order template. Those are my main two for specific products, depending on the situation. Uh, and then I might use one of these. These are pretty much the same. I don't know why I have duplicates here, uh, but I mainly use this one right here. This is my default. And I like to do free standard shipping just because customers are so used to getting free shipping I like to have that that option there okay but let's let's go through this shipping template so you can literally copy my shipping template if you'd like um, it's up to you I'm gonna show you kind of how you can gauge your handling time and your transit time uh, here coming up but let's go through this real quick so this is the shipping template and I'll show you how to create your own right now but if you want to see mine this is how it goes you can get as aggressive as you want um, this is how I like to do it we have for a free economy four to eight days we have um, standard shipping, which is managed by Amazon, and then we have the expedited shipping. As you can see, all of these other shippings are $0, 0 per pound, and 0 per order. But once we get into expedited shipping, you are going to want to charge your customer some shipping cost uh, because things get expensive. So I have mine at $30 per order at expedited. For two-day delivery, I have it at $40, and for one-day delivery, I have it at $50. So this is really going to be dependent on your kind of product because size and weight matter a lot when it comes to shipping cost. So you're gonna wanna adjust this however you see fit depending on the type of product that you are selling. All of my products are under three pounds, so this works out really well for me. Most of my products are about a pound and a half and to half a pound. 
So that's the majority of my FBM uh, products that I sell, uh, whether we're outside of Q4 or within Q4. And these, op these settings right here work extremely well. And then uh, your transit time is going to vary depending on where you're located. So because I'm, I'm in California, I'm in the West Coast, I feel very comfortable getting it to these states right here within one to two days. And then obviously the further that we go, it's gonna get longer and longer. Now, a good resource to help you determine, you know, how long it's going to take you to get to certain places is this pirate ship USPS zone map. And all you're going to do is just going to pick your location. So let's say we're located right here in California. Well, to get to Florida, it's going to take us obviously the longest time or to get up here to New York, it's going to take us the longest time, right? But if you are located somewhere more center of the country, then you're pretty much good anywhere you go. But as you can see, the further you go to one of the coasts, the longer it's going to take you to get to that um, location. So when we're looking at our shipping template and we're looking at our transit time, if you're not going to have Amazon automate this for you, you want to pick something that obviously is going to give you enough time to get it there. So this is the longest option that I have for expedited. And then obviously that's what I put for these states that are way, way farther from me. I don't do a lot of Puerto Rico and all of those other things. I have Canada here. I don't really get any Canada orders and I am completely good with that because the shipping can get very expensive. So I stick to mainly the US, have no issues getting Tons and tons of sales, especially in Q4. All right, but that is my shipping template. If you wanna copy that, you absolutely can, but let's say you wanna create your own shipping template. All you're gonna do is you're gonna come up here to create new shipping template. Now, you can get from a template already that you have created and just kind of adjust it slightly, or you can just go and create a brand new template from scratch. Now, when you go to create a new template, Amazon has this shipping settings automation, which you can do. I don't because I just did this. I figured this all out before they introduced this um, settings automation and I'm just more comfortable with doing it manually. But if you wanna do the settings um, automation, you absolutely can. I think they will calculate your transit time for you. So what you're gonna do, I'm just gonna show you a bit of it. You're gonna uh, put your ship from location. So you're gonna select the location that you have right here. And then you're gonna go to next. You're gonna say, I want to automate my self-fulfilled non-prime shipping settings. You're gonna go to next. And then you're gonna select what kind of shipping options that you want to use, okay? So once you do that, you're gonna have your shipping set services priority, and you're gonna fill out all of this information, and then you're gonna to go to review, and you're gonna be done, okay? If you don't wanna do this, all you have to do is cancel, and then you go to the manual um, setup for the shipping template, which again, is personally what I like because this is just what I'm used to. And so once you go here, you're gonna name your shipping template, name whatever you want, you can go to per item is what I like. And once we go down here, we're gonna go over to domestic shipping. Here, you're gonna have the shipping automation. If you click that, the menu is gonna pop back up. But so we're gonna get out of that. And then we have this option here. So as you can see, the difference from mine, mine is split up into different regions. I have like three different regions depending on the type of shipping that it is. So free economy, you're probably gonna have everything bundled up into one and you're gonna go as long as you can unless you feel comfortable that you can fulfill it three to five, depending on where you are. Now, standard shipping, you're going to want to change these things to whatever you're comfortable with. So you, as you can see, we have Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico. I actually don't fulfill any orders to them because shipping can get expensive. So I actually just take, take them out completely. And like, if you remember on my standard shipping, we have one to two days. Now they change it to two to three. We have one to two days. Um, depending on where you're at. Oh, okay, so they're giving me this option because these are farther, but because I'm in California, they have the one to two days. So wherever you are, so we can go two to four and we can go to five to eight depending on how far things are. Okay, so you can go in here, you can go to add a new region and you can select the different states that you want to fulfill to and put them into separate groups depending on how long they're gonna take. Okay, so you can go and do all of this right here. Again, I take all of these other ones out and that's how I like to do it. So then you're gonna do the same thing for expedited shipping and then you can do the same thing for two day and one day you can refer back, but it's super simple, okay? Super simple once you get to that. Hopefully I'm making it as simple as I think I am uh, because this really, really confused me for a long time. So now as far as shipping fees go, you can charge per order, but like I said, for my standard default shipping template that I use primarily, I like to give free shipping. So 
that's what I do. I keep everything zero for standard shipping. Once we get into expedited two day and one day, you want to make sure that you're charging something here or you're going to eat the cost or you're going to have to cancel the orders because you're going to see how expensive they are and then you're going to get dinged on your account. Okay. So standard shipping, I like to leave it free. If you don't like to, then you can put, you know, $4.99, $3.99, whatever, plus $1 per pound, plus $50 per pound, plus $2 per pound, whatever you like. Just make sure that it's competitive enough that you can actually get some sales. Because if you come in here and you're like, oh, $10 per order plus $1 per pound, and then you're matching the buy box price, you're not gonna get any sales, okay? So it has to be competitive enough. So make sure when you're sourcing FBM products that you're calculating that into your margin, okay? Next thing is expedited shipping. You wanna make sure that you're charging a good amount because these things can get expensive. The expedited, the two day and the one day can get expensive. Now, real quick, before we start fulfilling orders, you need to list your product on Amazon and you need to list it for FBM. So I made this video recently and it's how to list your product. I go in great detail. So after you finish watching this video, make sure to watch how to list your product so that you understand how to list your product properly so that you can be set up for your FBM shipment. So now let's jump back into my computer and let me show you how to actually fulfill an order and get the shipment shipping labels so then we can send it out to our customers and once we click on that we're going to be taken to the manage orders page and you're going to be able to see what you have pending what's about to come in that you're going to need to ship out what you have unshipped and you can also go down to quick filters and go to verge of late shipment um, to see what needs to be shipped out today above everything else you want to make sure that you're shipping these out on time if it happens that you ship something out late here and there every once in a while no big deal, but you definitely don't want to make a habit of it. Okay. Amazon takes shipping products out to their customers extremely seriously. And you want to make sure that your account stays in good standing. So once you go here, we're going to see all of the orders that we have ready to be shipped out today. And one thing that you can do if you have a lot of orders for the same type of product. So we have, let's see, we have these products that are checked are all the same product. Okay. So I could go and I could do buy shipping one at a time and it would take a lot longer. So when you have multiple orders for the same product, you're going to use buy shipping in bulk. Okay. And then you're going to be able to fulfill those all at the same time. But let me show you what it looks like if you have just one order right now, or you have, you know, one order for a bunch of different products, what that would look like. So what we're going to do, let's say we're going to fulfill this order right here. We can see the order type. So it's free economy. And we also have standard and then we have pretty much free economy and standard. Um, what we're going to do from here, it's just going to tell us when this needs to be shipped out by. So we make sure that we ship it out on time and then we're going to go over to buy shipping. And then it's going to take us to the order details page for this specific order. It's going to tell us where we're shipping it to. It's going to tell us our order summary and it's going to tell us what kind of product we have and how many of that product. Keep in mind, if you get, you know, a, two orders for the same product or three orders for the same product, you want to make sure that you're looking at that so you fulfill it correctly. Okay. There's a lot of different things that you have to pay attention to that when you're doing FBA, you don't really have to worry about. But I promise after you get a handful of FBM orders and you fulfill them, it's going to seem like so easy. You're going to be like, why did I take so long to do this? So then if we scroll down the page, we're going to be able to buy our shipping. Okay. So we have where it's coming from our ship date and what kind of label orientation we have. So highly recommend you guys use a thermal printer four by six. It's going to make your life way easier. But if it's your first time fulfilling this FBM order, you're not going to have the packaging or the weight. It's going to be empty. So you're going to need to go to change parcel dimensions. And then that is where you're going to enter these dimensions. Okay. Not these specific ones, but the dimensions for your specific product. Okay. This is for this product. Yours may be 12 by 12 by 12. We don't know. Okay. So you're going to have to make sure that you measure out what the dimensions are of your package and then the weight. The weight, in my opinion, is probably the biggest factor when it comes to shipping cost. So the heavier the product, the more expensive the shipping is going to be. Typically, not every single time, but typically when it's under one pound, chances are you're gonna ship it out USPS. That is gonna be the cheapest option. If it's over one pound, chances are you're gonna ship it out UPS ground saver. Okay, so obviously we wanna go with the cheapest shipping option. So we're gonna go to, with USPS, and then we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna click on buy shipping. Once we buy shipping, then we're gonna get a pop-up and we're gonna be able to print out the label. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now, if we go back to the manage inventory page, and let's say we are fulfilling multiple of the same product, just a bunch of different orders. We're going to go to buy shipping in bulk. This is going to save you a ton of time. 
So you can see that we have all of the orders right here. They're all the exact same. You can see that shipping is pretty much standard for this product. If you have a heavier product, um, depending on where it's going, uh, it's gonna obviously be more expensive, right? So this one can pretty much go anywhere, but it's under one pound, so we don't have too much variance in the price. But when you get into those heavier products, it definitely does. So if this is your first time doing buy shipping in bulk, you're not gonna see this option here, and you're not gonna see this here. You're gonna need to go to add a new package, and then that is where you're gonna enter your dimension, and then you can enter your weight. Once you do that, once you go to add a new package, you enter length, width, height. You save it and you add your weight. Then you will get the option to uh, select a shipping service. So because this is under a pound, we have USPS all throughout all of these orders. But for some reason, we don't wanna do USPS. We can always go here to change. And then we would get all of the options that we have right here. But again, our goal is to make money. So we wanna make sure that we're picking the option that is the cheapest for us that will still get our goods to our customers on time. And that's pretty much it. You're gonna to go to buy shipping, you're gonna get all of the labels for all of these orders, and then you're gonna print them out and put them on your packaging. All right, so now we did all of the complicated stuff with the shipping template. We've been able to get our orders and our shipping labels. So now we need to actually fulfill the order. And this part is very, very simple to do, but you are gonna need some pieces of equipment that are gonna make your life a whole lot easier. The first thing that you're gonna need is a thermal printer for your shipping labels. Now, using an inkjet in the beginning is completely fine, but when it comes to FBM, you're gonna realize that using an inkjet is a nightmare because you're gonna be running out of ink incredibly fast and just printers just always have issues, at least mine always do. So getting a thermal printer is well worth your money. You're gonna be able to crank out a bunch of different shipping labels with no issues whatsoever. So this is the one I recommend. This is the one I've been using for a very long time. Uh, it's much cheaper than something like a Rolo or a Dyno and it gets the job done extremely well. I've never had any issues. I'll link it down below if you guys are interested in it. Uh, it's like less than half the price of one of those bigger brands. Now, as far as materials go, this is really going to be dependent on what types of products that you're selling. So if you're selling something that's a little bit more fragile, then you're going to want to use like a box with packing material to make sure that it's not going to break. So if you're selling anything glass related, you don't want to send that in a poly mailer and you definitely don't want to send that in just a regular uh, bubble mailer or anything like that because it's chances are it's going to break. You're going to want to put that in in a box but if you're something selling something else that's like you know it's already in a box it's not likely to get damaged or anything like that you can probably get away with sending it off in a bubble mailer if you're selling anything like video games or dvds or anything like this or even small boxes of makeup you can even send that in a poly mailer it doesn't even have to be a bubble mailer the biggest thing that i can say is just use a little common sense when it comes to fulfilling these orders and just think to yourself if i send it in this packaging Will it get damaged? Will the box get destroyed? Uh, will the product get broken? So that's just what I use. Like it's very, very simple to fulfill these orders. You just want to use common sense and be like, okay, if I were to get this order like this, would I be okay with that? Right? And then that's going to take you a very long way. Now, when it comes to packaging material, don't use packaging material that is way too big or heavier than it needs to be. So we talked about boxes and poly mailers. So if you're selling a product that you could realistically put in a bubble mailer or a poly mailer. Don't use a box for it because if you're going to use a box for it, it's going to charge you more in shipping because all of the weight that you are putting into this order is going to increase the cost of fulfillment. So if you're using a, a bubble mailer or I mean a poly mailer that barely weighs anything and then you're using a heavier box, to ship out the same order, it's gonna cost you more money. So look at this clip right here. This is me fulfilling some video games last Q4, and I was using these boxes right here. And once I switched over to bubble mailers, I literally saved a dollar to a dollar fifty on average on every single unit that I was fulfilling. But I was fulfilling it in boxes previously, and that was uh, not getting it done. But there was also other products that I fulfilled in the past where I'm using this big heavy box, but it's absolutely necessary in order to get that product out in one piece. Now you can get all of your shipping materials on amazon.com. You can get it from Walmart. You can also 
also get it from Uline. The only times that I'll buy things from Uline is if I need something specific, like a specific dimension. Because if I have something that's like, let's say a nine by 12 by three, right? And I wanna get it as close as I possibly can to that size, assuming that I have a lot of orders or a lot of inventory for that one size. If I have like one off or two off, it doesn't really matter as much, but if I have like hundreds and hundreds of it, um, like I did last Q4 season, then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna order something very specific of a size that I can probably only get at Uline. Other than that, I like to get boxes from Amazon and my bubble mailers and my poly mailers from Amazon because usually it's the cheapest. So and I'm trying to cut down on costs when I'm fulfilling these orders so then I can increase my margin. So those are the main places where I get my inventory. Now, once you have your order completely fulfilled and ready to go, you're gonna put the label on the packaging, like I said, and then you're gonna send it off through USPS or UPS depending on how heavy that product is, it's gonna to go to one or the other. Usually if it's under one pound, it's gonna go USPS. Not every single time, but typically this is what happens. But if it goes over one pound or it is one pound exactly, it's gonna go UPS, okay? So the lighter the product, it's gonna be cheaper, the heavier and the farther that it goes, it's gonna be more expensive. Now, when you're first starting out and you're only getting a handful of orders, it's not a big deal to drive it over to USPS or UPS. But once you start getting you know, 20, 30, 50 orders a day, even 100 orders a day, it's gonna be a big pain in the ass to be able to take all of that to the post office. So you're gonna wanna set up um, UPS pickups or USPS pickups. These are really simple to do. UPS does charge you money, but you can do it same day and select a window. But USPS does it next day and you cannot select a window, but it is free. So for me, once I start getting into Q4 season and I know I'm getting daily orders, I will just set up a USPS uh, pickup um, for next day, even though technically I don't have any orders for that day. But because, you know, I know I'm going to get some orders, that's how you would do that so that you're not having to take all of these products. Uh, load them up in your car and then take them over to the post office it just becomes a pain in the ass now the way that i schedule my pickups is through ship.rollo.com this is the simplest way that i have found to do this um, you can do usps pickup and you can also do ups pickup and ups will give you a discount so instead of paying 20 dollars per pickup if you were to do it through the ups website you're doing four dollars per pickup if you're doing ship.rollo.com and you can just create a free account on there you don't have to have any of their uh, products or anything like that and you're you're still gonna be able to use the site perfectly fine now let's quickly talk about getting sales on FBM so earlier in the video we talked about handling times where you could set zero day handling or you can set one day handling for me personally I have not had any difference in the amount of orders that I get when I'm doing zero day or one day I get plenty of orders just doing one day where the difference lies is in price so a lot of times people will think that you need to go and look for FBM specific products to be able to source, whether you find that on Keepa and you see who's fulfilling FBM or who's willing to buy box FBM and FBA. Honestly, guys, in my personal experience, it, you don't need to do that. You can literally source products just like you would source any other product. And assuming you have the margin for it, you can FBM any one of those products, regardless of who has the buy box and how many FBM sellers are on there or how many FBA sellers are on there. I routinely source products and I fulfill them FBM, even though there is no FBM offers, it's all about price. And when it comes to price, you're typically going to want to be cheaper than the lowest FBA price. And it just really depends on the product. There's listings that I am currently FBMing right now. We're doing just a couple of sales per day because I don't go super heavy until Q4. But these products, one of them I'm just below the buy box by $1. Another one, I'm below the buy box by $3. So I really have to experiment with the pricing. And then over time, then you're able to see, okay, which which range do I need to be in for this specific ASIN to get the buy box. Once I start to notice that I'm getting the buy box pretty consistently, then I will slowly raise the price. So I had a product recently where I wasn't getting the buy box until I was $3 under the lowest FBA price. Well, then after I started getting consistent sales with that lower FBM price, then I bumped it up. Uh, I bumped it up by a dollar. I was still getting sales. And then I bumped it up by $2 and I was still getting sales. Even though when I originally had it just $1 below, I wasn't getting any sales. Okay. So it's really just comes down to testing your price and seeing which 
price points are gonna work for different ASINs, but as far as product research goes and handling time, it's just not as big of a deal, at least that I have noticed. So you can literally just do product research exactly how you would any other product just make sure that you're switching the toggle on your profit and loss calculator to make sure that you're calculating for FBM costs and, and putting in a shipping cost for it as well so that you can see if you're actually gonna be profitable FBM in that product. And if you're actually able to be profitable FBM in that product, you can fulfill FBM any product that you want. Now, if you don't know how to find any profitable inventory to sell on Amazon, I want you to watch this video right here where I go through product research in depth and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do. But if you're tired of being on the YouTube hamster wheel going from one video to another and then months and months go by and you haven't made any progress or built the business that you really wanted to build, I want you to click that first link in the description. That's my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where I routinely take brand new sellers from zero to their first 10K month within 90 days, just like I've helped hundreds and hundreds of other people do as well. Check that first link out in the description, one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. I appreciate you guys watching until the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.